Hi, I'm John, your Fix It Addict. We're back with Frosty Part 2. In the last video, we did this huge crack. It was cracked side to side and just about to make a full circle. This top, the heavy part of the top was actually collapsed down into the base and it was all distorted just from being broken for so long. There was tape on here when, when we found it. And it, it was a mess so to get the tape off and all and do the repairs. We also, if you recall, made this hole bigger so we could get our hand in there to do the stuff we're going to do today. And speaking of today, we're going to do some artistry. We're going to recreate this glove piece with moldable thermal plastic pellets. And uh, we're going to create a base we're going to put some holes around here so the thermoplastic putty has something to go into and hold. Otherwise, there's nothing to hold it here. It's not a very adhesive product. So I'll show you how that's done. So before we start, it's always good to take care of everything you can before you do the big stuff because this is open. We could get in here, take care of this hole right here. And there's also a crack right here. Of course, it falls backwards and hits that. This we're, we're going to glue on the inside with hot milk glue. It's a dark area. You won't see the, the color variance and the, with the lighting and all. Okay, here's what we're going to need for this project. Of course, we start with the moldable plastic pellets. Get these from Amazon. I use Betulinol. We'll use a hot air gun, marker thinner, scotch tape, steel wool, a hot glue gun, high temperature, a soldering gun, and of course a clean casserole dish, which will mix hot water, 150 degrees, and this, when you mix it, it turns into a clear putty moldable. We got to work pretty quick with it. We'll show you how that's molded into place. Let's get started. Okay, what we're going to do is start with the repair in the back. This is the back of the scarf, and it's a high point where the mold falls back and breaks. It's uh, You can see it's been impacted several times. There's two cracks that run like railroad tracks down the sides. The nice thing about it, most of the material is still here. So what we're going to do is hot melt glue this from the inside. Doing that is going to make a solidify the area. And you're not going to see it. It's a dark area and we're going to hit this with the um, airbrush. We'll, we'll highlight all of this. We'll get it. There'll be another video. So I'm going to tape this with scotch tape to keep the hot melt glue from running out. We use scotch tape because I don't want to use blue or painter's tape. Because it'll leave blue residue in there and stick to the glue and then we have to clean it up later. The scotch tape will just come right out. It's just to kind of stop it, the loose hot glue from running out. Even if it does, we could clean it up later. We could hit that with a heat gun and it'll just melt. Okay, you can see where the crack is, right there, that we scotch tape from the other side. Get it down in the cracks and crevices. These things get dirty on the inside, bugs and such. Let that dry. So before you put the hot melt glue, heat up the plastic on low with the heat gun. This will blow dry out the lacquer thinner, blow any dust out. Plus it's going to make the plastic more supple and it'll help the hot melt glue adhere. It's a bit of a trick but you'll get the hot melt glue inside there. It's best to have the blow mold in your lap, whereas you're 
pouring the glue out, you could kind of form a puddle and roll it around, roll the hot glue around until it gets exactly where you want it. Just be real careful because you're in a confined space with a hot gun. It's easy to burn yourself. You might want to consider the nitrile gloves for this process. We're going to do the same that we did with that with this piece down here. It's not big enough to have to put thermal plastic in there. So let's take some scotch tape. Let's just close up these holes so the hot milk glue don't run out. We'll flip the mold, balance it, and we'll glue it from the inside in this corner, bracing that whole corner. So when it falls again, it's going to hit a hard spot and not break easy. Okay, once you've cleaned that area with lacquer thinner, you bring the heat gun down in through the face, and you can look through the light bulb hole where you're working and guide it right into where you need to go. So when you're putting the glue in, again, you want to kind of keep the mold in your hands where you could puddle it and roll it around, kind of like making a candle. Because we want to, we got to build up that bottom corner so it doesn't break again. So while you're watching it, you could watch the the mass that you just put in there, the hot glue. It'll kind of want to roll around because it's it's hot. It's almost like water. So this is almost a two coat. I would do one coat. And then another coat, and then wash through the hole, and roll it around and to the place where you want it to be, the puddle of hot glue. Roll it around until it starts to solidify, and leave it right there. It'll take a while, and you'll have to manipulate. Once the glue starts to set, you can take the tape off, and it it'll come right off. Now you've got kind of a molded area. We'll clean. There's some of the glue coming through, but we'll clean that up. Now it's a nice solid piece, as well as the back corner, solid again. We are golden. Frosty is going to be ready for this Christmas. I can see it. Now it's time to cook up some thermoplastic putty. It's kind of white pellets, but they'll turn clear when they're hot. Put some water in a casserole dish. Always pour more than you need because you could reuse it. It'll, if there's a amount you don't use, you could heat it up again and it'll turn soft again. Let's heat it up. Once the plastic has melted, Make it into some molds. Get the as much water off of it as you can. Be nice to have a towel handy. Mold two patties. And then take one from each side. From the inside. And you gotta knead it into place. And the one from the outside. So you're kind of making a lip around the plastic. While you're pushing from the inside. And then just kind of work it into place so it's nice and kind of blends with the rest of the snowman. Stuff is great. Look at that. And there's the molded thumb. We work these edges around the reeds so they won't show later. Kind of work it in. Don't worry about fingerprints because later we'll heat it with the hot milk glue gun. I know that. Okay, there's all the holes. Kind of Frankenstein ish, but they'll be covered. When I was breaking. Cutting away the broken stuff, I try to leave some outstanding edges so I could put the holes in the side so they're not noticeable from the front. But you won't see it anyway, the mold's going to cover it, the uh, putty's going to cover it. 
They made holes all around here, all around here, and then underneath, around here. So the, to putty this is going to be done in stages. And here's where we're going to keep the hot air gun handy because as we move forward, we'll do a stage, kind of let it set up a little bit, then we'll do another stage, we'll heat up the edge line of the previous stage to get it liquid again, and then we'll mold to that. So before you start forming, go around with the soldering iron. Just go around the inside edges and melt them nice and smooth. What will happen otherwise is you're forming, if you hit a high spot or a crack, it's just going to splinter crack on you. And you'll end up with another broken section that you'll have to keep patching and patching and patching. So cleaning up, just go over the hot gun, brown the edges off. If anything's sharp or V sticking up, just take it out. At this point, we're going to be rebuilding most of it anyway. So go around with that hot gun. You don't have to feel no snags. I've already done it, so you don't get any crispy sound. Because once we start molding it, we're going to be working it fast. And So before you start forming, again, get a visual of uh, what you believe it's going to look like. If you could find some pictures and some magazines or online to get it a, even a better idea but in, from what I see here it looks like his hand is holding the candy cane so it's in a glove there's the collar of the glove so this is going to come out around the candy cane and then back down and his thumb will like I said we're going to do this in layers it's really the only way you can't take one big piece and you won't be able to hold it here, it's gonna collapse. So we'll build it and layer it as we go. Start with a strip. Put some towel on your lap. So you dry it up as much as you can without getting dirt on it. And start forming. This is gonna be a lot of custom work. Remember to get it around and squeeze it into those holes we made. So it creates an anchor point. So his thumb is going to, in the glove, it's going to be over the, or his hands, I should say his fingers are going to be over the candy cane. So we got to start working in a kind of a lump here where his fingers will be thicker. The glove will be thicker because it's over the cane. We're starting to work that in. Bend it in. As you're molding it, it'll start setting up, getting stiffer and stiffer. And then gravity is going to want to pull it all down, so you've got to work in small areas, stretching it and kneading it. It doesn't need to be thick, it's pretty strong stuff. Once it dries and hardens, it's pretty strong. You see as I keep squeezing it, it keeps working this way. So you have to do small sections because you'll be fighting it over here and then once this sets we'll keep on building this way we'll heat this up with the heat gun we'll keep on building over but the big thing is to get it through those holes and get it anchored with those soldering gun holes that we made try to make an even line along his wrist and you can see it's starting to set up so you're going to have to wait till it sets up to go further. It's a labor of love. You got to keep the water hot, got to keep the putty hot. If you find that you're working it too hard, you got to heat it up again. You, you get in, it's so easy to overpress it and just crack down, blow mold. It's so brittle. But we're getting there. If you find that you've got nothing for the 
putty to hold on to start making more holes I had to make a few more here because it again it's not a bonding material it, it's sticky and it sets up good and hard but it, it's not a, a glue it's not an adhesive so it's got to be held in place with anchors so I made a few more holes You're going to want to make it thicker when you come to impact points. So if it were to fall over, your impact point's going to be here. So I'm going to add a, a strip right at that impact point to make it thicker. Move it in. So if it were to fall over this way, it'll hit the thicker part and not destroy the whole thing. See it starts to turn opaque. And we gotta kind of start forming it on the run and holding it in place. It's starting to take shape. You gotta keep working it and kind of pulling it back up because gravity's gonna Again, gravity's going to want to take it because it's all mushy and especially the heavy part we just added. It'll keep falling. There it's starting to make shape. And if you find you've got too much material, double it over and knead it in. And you can see it's starting to take shape. We're halfway there. So I've created a kind of a divot here. It's still kind of soft, soft so it could work on a little bit. Kind of a divot along here. Here's where his fingers come up over the cane. So just kind of keep working it and it'll eventually hold in place once it dries more and more. Remember we could always, we'll glaze it over later. Don't worry about fingerprints or anything else. Wow. It's looking pretty good. So we're at the midpoint, so we want this to set up a bit. Get this finely shaped here a little bit more. Again, his fingers are around the cane. So we're gonna start coming back in at this point. We came out and come back in. So let's let this harden up so the rest of this putty's got something to hang on to. And then we'll heat this edge with the heat gun so we could keep going. Solidified enough to keep working. Now we're going to start our way up from the bottom. This way we could start forming a consistent pattern versus trying to just hang this all out here and meet it up. We're going to have to go and work from the other side in a bit and we'll close this up. This will be the easiest part. But for now we got to now heat up this live edge again because it's hardened so we could keep adding to it. This is where it's real easy to overheat this stuff and the whole thing will collapse on you. So a little heat goes a long way. Let's give it a little time. Heat it from both sides. Yeah, this is starting to turn clear. The whole thing could collapse. Good enough. It's getting smaller. Always keep in mind. Keep pushing that putty through the rivet holes hard so it latches onto itself as like a rivet. It's kind of like a clay rivet. Ain't gonna go nowhere. Look at that. I wonder about the person that originally created the mold for this. Perhaps it was made out of clay and then they made the metal mold and then they blow the plastic into it. 
But the person that did this, God knows how long ago, we're kind of replicating his footsteps or hers. Oh, that's closing right up. Yeah, we're gonna let this just keep working it until it stiffens before we go any further here. Because this I'll wanna cave in. We'll do a little more here and then we'll switch to the inside for that. So it's closing up pretty good. This is solidified enough where it'll support its own weight. Watch your bonding points. Sometimes the first one will drive quicker than the second. You get in there and take care of that real quick. start adding to it. I'm going to melt it again, melt the edges, so you can keep adding. See how it turns clear if you heat it up. Very easy to get carried away. The whole thing will collapse. Because you're waiting for it to turn clear and then suddenly boom, it'll turn clear. Now it becomes hard to get the other side out. You have to bend it out a bit. Again, form our two patties. Start closing this up. <laughs> it kind of starts to collapse. But we'll take care of that. Again, we're going to stiffen up this outer area with another sheet. Because on the impact point, if it ever, when it does fall over, and you know it will, we got a little more material to those pancakes. Keep it from breaking, hopefully it kind of distribute the impact and around. Now we're going to start, we went up, up elevated here, we're going to start rolling this down because his fingers are wrapping around the candy cane. Remember there's gravity tugging away at the bottom. And I cannot emphasize enough to keep your hands clean because this sticky stuff will pick up everything and it's embedded in there then you would have to melt it out or cut out a section if it got contaminated and if it does get it then it doesn't stick to itself that well if it does get contaminated just keep working it get this the fingers wrapped around the candy cane there it is It's a lot of a lot of customization. That's what's so fun. I've never done work like modeling before, but it sure is interesting. And you can kind of put your own twist to it. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna start passing from around the back side. So let's heat up with this supple here. Heat up these edges so we can bond to it. Keep the plastic a little soft. There's a lot of cracks here. Trying to get the edges soft so the new stuff will adhere to it. Okay. 
pancakes, one for either side, or both sides, one on each side. Make a consistent thickness for this. You're not going to want to be working this a whole lot. This stuff's amazing. Now both sides from the back and from the front. Just kind of mold it into the, into the other stuff. work it. It's so hard to do it from both sides. Stretch it. I know this part would be hard. Difficult. I need some more from the back. Make a nice silver dollar. Remember the stuff in the back and the front. We gotta push through those holes. So it's got something to hook into. This is really the difficult part. That's why it's nice to do the bottom first and work your way up so the top stuff has got something to rest on. Gives you some flexibility. Okay, it's getting down to the wire. We're going to go to pancakes. Do them a little thinner so you're not having to work it so hard. Both sides and close up this. Of course, don't touch it. That's what happens. Close up the hole. It's collapsing. Gravity is calling it all home. Make sure you reinforce it from the back. There's some weak areas. There's another weak area, but it's easy to forget about the, the back side because we got to make this strong. And grip it from both sides because that's what that's the only thing that holds the clay in or the putty is bonding from both sides it can't escape We had to take the repair up and around the chest line, so we have to define the thumb now and close up the chest line tight in here. So I have to work a little heat into it.
I still have to define this thumb. There it is. Bring this chest area in tight. Because this conforms this the roll of the ball of the snowball. Now here's where you could work in your seams where we use other where we bonded multiple rows together. Looking better and better. While it's still kinda soft, start divoting it. Because we want to match this. Get the fingerprints out later. We'll just glaze it with the heat gun and see how it gets round. Looks like hail marks. Perfect. Much, much better. The nice thing about a snowman is that it's made out of snow, which is not a perfect media and you could see it'll it's clear now but this the original stuff we started with is starting to turn white and it almost has a fluffy appearance we know and here he is frosty all repaired when we found him it was sad it was really sad this was gone so they had taken like white duct tape and fashion the hand kind of like paper mache. This entire backside had a huge crack in it, and this was just layers and layers of duct tape. It was difficult getting the duct tape off, especially after being out in the sun for how many years. So the hand was difficult because it was completely gone. And then we had to think of okay. What caused it to break in the first place? And that was Frosty falling forward and landing on a high spot. So we chose a plastic that's solid. We added layers, multiple layers of thickness here. With layers of thickness, it gets more opaque and it gets darker. But we needed those extra layers to take as impact points. The thumb is pretty straightforward. With being darker, of course, it's gonna it'll show with the light. So I've designed a lighting tree that will go inside, so we could direct the light and make it just more diffuse, so it's not projecting through the repair. We'll do that in our lighting segment. Next, we're gonna airbrush them. Over the summer, we've been working with some amazing airbrush products and paints, Createx. And we put together some paints that are transparent. And we've also been trying different hardeners. The hardeners are required to get the paint to stick to the plastic. It just comes off in sheets otherwise. We've got a snowman over here where somebody had taken a brush to it. And it looked nice, but it all just flaked off. So with airbrushing, we'll bring out the original character of it. We're also going to highlight the brim and add some character, a little pink on the cheeks, a little darker edging to kind of give it depth. So the transparent paint is, is really amazing. And uh, we use two different types of airbrushes. So stay tuned and we'll be getting into that. Thank you for watching.